What's up guys, Sergeant Josh, coming to you live from Tennessee Army National Guard Motor Pool, where it's really, really hot. So, uh, today let's talk about uh, readiness. How ready are you for the fight? In the National Guard, we talk about readiness all the time. Uh, basically, what they're talking about is, are you medically ready? Do you have the right shots? Uh, do you have the right training? Do you have the right classes signed off on? Um, and that's all well and good, but for uh, the general public and, and even us, uh, how ready are you for the fight? And I'm not talking about are you on a deployment schedule, are you going overseas? I'm talking about um, if shit went down, if shit got sideways at a convenience store and you caught a stray round, uh, how ready are you to uh, defend yourself and how ready are you to provide emergency medical care to yourself? So. The whole purpose of the video uh, is to stress, uh, I guess, medical readiness. Uh, how are you going to fix yourself if you get hurt? Um, especially for, in my case, my personal case, uh, being a National Guard soldier, um, I feel like we are a little underprepared. Uh, a lot of us don't have uh, medical training that, you know, with it, it's, it's recent. Um, I'm talking about like combat lifesaver class or if you're in the private world, say immediate action medical from tactical response. Um, I took that class last October because it's a priority for me. I, I need to be able to save a life uh, just as well as I can take one. So in my last video you saw um, some medical gear um, but the thing is as a National Guardsman we are every bit as capable to uh, save a life and medical training is something that is universal so it's something that we should all have and it's something that as a National Guardsman I have not been provided um, from the National Guard and I feel like that, that should be a priority for leadership so what I would ask is uh, of the leadership provide more medical training provide a trauma kit uh, for your m day soldiers or in my case as a full-time technician uh, provide a trauma kit for us in the event of an active shooter or a serious accident at work provide uh, tourniquets instead of printing out blue books from j9 that's great they have a purpose uh, a tourniquet a cat's tourniquet for me would be infinitely more useful uh, I have one, I carry one in my cargo pocket down here, along with a set of gloves. Um, but that was something that I personally purchased because it was a priority for me. I feel like everyone should have that. I feel like that that should be a uniform item, just like a pen and a pencil. So uh, if you agree, uh, share this video. Uh, let's see if we can't get leadership involved and see if we can't uh, reallocate some funds uh, to something that could really make a difference. Uh, I'm not saying that some of these other things that we do don't make a difference, but I'm telling you right now, um, if I had a tourniquet and some training and some gauze and a pressure dressing or just some basic, basic things, I could save somebody's life. And that's more important to me than having, you know, a joint force headquarter phone number that I'll never call in my pocket. So uh, if you like the video, hit like. If you like it enough to see it again, click subscribe. Share this, share this video. Let's, uh, let's get this out there to the leadership and see if we can't make great things happen. So just remember, when avoidance, deterrence, and de-escalation fail, a high rate of fire usually doesn't. Thanks, guys.